Good morning, everyone. So we are going to continue to discuss some of the comments section from YouTube from my haters. Now, this can be comments on my video or this can be comments on a video where someone tried to, and I say tried, <laughs> tried to rebut me and their comment section had stuff like this. I mean, it's just golden, guys. It's golden. And unfortunately... For Judaism, these are the people that represent Judaism online. I mean, they're just the loudest. So, of course, I have to be the one to show this, and it's just going to make me the bad guy all over again, but that's fine. It is what it is. All right. I'm going to read this comment or uh, comments. It's kind of, it might be hard for you to see, but let's see. This person's uh, name, YouTube name is. I know how to read. <laughs> okay. Uh, continuing on. Prophetic perfect doesn't exist. That's a made up Christian talk. I see you are dependent on Christian translation. And it gets really small and it's very hard for me to see. Let me see. Okay. It says, I suggest you take a basic Hebrew course. You'd be amazed. Heck. Even take a course with a Christian teacher on Hebrew. So the, the commenter above made a statement that the Radak made a statement that you basically prophetic perfect. That tenses in past or in future kind of swap um, in biblical Hebrew. And this is called the Vav consecutive. Okay, this is like the modern term Vav consecutive. Um, that scholars would use. Um, however, laymen just say it's the reversing vav. Okay, it's like the reversing vav. Um, so now I'm going to show you. She said she couldn't find the source. I've got you. I've got you, girl. I got the source for you. Okay, here we are on a Jewish website. I made sure not to pull anything from a Christian website. And he answered me. A past tense in place of a future equivalent to, and he will answer me. And there are many similar cases. Let's scoot up. Or it may be taken according to its literal sense. For he was confident of this. Now, I've said this numerous times. I'm going to show a clip of what I'm talking about when I said this numerous times. Dr. Michael Brown uh, discussed it. I have discussed it. It's been discussed. It's out there. Okay. Uh, confident in this. So the person is so confident that it's going to happen. They speak of it as if it's already happened when it's future. That's basically what this is saying. Okay. Or the Holy Spirit made a revelation upon his tongue. Anyway, skipping down here for we've already interpreted the Psalms were uttered by the Holy Spirit. Oh, that sounds super Christian. Oh, Go figure. And in the greater part of the prophecy, this is found that the speaker uses the past tense in place of future. For it is as though the thing had already happened when it has been spoken in the Holy Spirit. So, unless you're about to make the statement that Rabbi David Kimke the Radak was a Christian. I need you, the I know how to read guy, because you follow my page, to take back your statements because, no, it's not a Christian talk. I just brought you the receipts. Now I'm going to continue to bring the receipts. If you wonder that, I would say that's a great question. And the answer is twofold. The Vav is called a Vav consecutive because it's created by adding a Vav to an imperfect verb form, a, a, a three-letter root that has a prefix attached to the beginning of it. It's called Vav consecutive because it's used to narrate consecutive actions as they unfold in a biblical story. Another name for it is the Mesa Pair. That's simply the modern Hebrew word for narrator. Mm -hmm. Well, the first thing to remember is that they only happen with imperfect verb forms. Only imperfect. 
So then he goes on to explain all of the vowel pointings, etc., that would needed uh, that would be needed. Um, again, please remember that vowel pointings were added into the text later, which is after the time of the New Testament. Now there are hundreds of these in the Bible, so why don't we see it all the time? Because in most cases it would be confusing. And so what scholars do is they simply, a scholar who's reading the Hebrew, reading the Greek, sees the past tense and goes, oh, the reader won't understand this, so I'm going to put it in the future tense. Exactly. See. And then he goes on to give examples. You're free to watch that. Continuing on. Clip with Dr. Brown speaking to Manny, the Jewish guy who called in before me about the prophetic perfect. But, but, he, right, but there's several ways of reading it. Number one, the prophet could be speaking, but speaking on behalf of the Messiah. Another is it's just a, a conversation in the spirit for the future. I mean, a lot of, a lot of prophecy, you know, there, there's prophecy that's put in the past tense all the time. We're talking about future right. events. But yeah. my argument is yes, exactly. So guys, I don't know how many more times I can refute my haters and just show proof that they either don't know Judaism, they don't know what Jewish literature says, or they're hiding that from you, ultimately just showing that they just don't like the information I'm sharing, or they don't personally like me, which I really don't care about. But nonetheless, I think it's absolutely clear that if you're going to come after me, at least know your stuff and know when I'm bringing forth a Jewish point that absolutely makes sense, because it's clear you don't have receipts, Mr. I know how to read, and I have all the receipts. Really fast, this is what she said. In fact, I have read that the Radak says in his Bible commentary that even the past tense can be used in prophecies about the future. And then she says that she don't have the actual citation, but that's why I said I got you, girl. So guys, until next time, I hope the video was a blessing. Shalom.